again, out of character because you know that's not like you. When you can't sleep and you can't eat, those are soul ties because this person has put their roots deep down in you. What are soul ties? Why is everyone talking about soul ties? We hear it a lot in the Christian world, but we also hear it a lot on social media. How do you break them? Well, we're gonna talk about that and so much more in this segment of It's Scary to Be Married. What's up, Brave Arts community? This is Sean Heineman, your premier pre-engagement coach, back with another segment of It's Scary to Remarry, wanting you to love fearlessly. We're going to talk about this soul, soul tie thing. There was a video that I posted on my Instagram reel, on my YouTube short, and someone was interviewing a witch. And she talked about, from a sexual perspective, how... Casting a spell on someone can cause a soul tie, like certain things that you say to someone. I'm not going to get explicit, but if you try to watch the video, the video probably would be down by the time you see this clip so uh, or this video. So it probably won't be up, but I'm just kind of giving an explanation of how this soul tie thing just really continued to show on my timeline from this video. In the comment section, there was a lot of people saying, how do I get rid of the soul tie? Because people saying they hear it, but they don't know how to get rid of it. So I'm going to give you three ways to break a soul tie. From uh, a, a biblical perspective, we're going to talk about two becoming one. We're going to talk about that oneness. And we're going to talk about some practical things and how to break the soul tie. Even though it is spiritual, there are some practical things that you can carry out in your everyday life to break this soul tie. So let's jump into number one. Number one, I do want to say that as a believer myself, I believe the only way you can break this soul tie is through the blood of Jesus Christ as a believer. That's what I believe because this soul ties is spiritual. It's not something that you can see. So it's going to take the blood of Jesus to break that. That's number one. In John 15, verse five, Jesus says, I am the vine and you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. So I believe that's why you need the blood of Jesus, because Jesus says, apart from me, you can do nothing. And he's the vine and you are the branches. Now, I want to talk about soul ties from a sexual perspective, right? I believe the fastest way to get someone hooked on a soul tie is through sex. I believe through sex, that's how someone can get their roots deep down in you and you're opening yourself up or you're giving of yourself to someone else that you aren't married to. Remember, I said soul ties are spiritual. Let's look at Ephesians chapter six, verse 12. It says, for the struggle, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against authorities, against powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil and heavenly realms. So that's why I say you're going to need the blood of Jesus because soul ties are spiritual and it's something that's going to take something deeper than uh, just believing in anything or just saying a certain thing. So I want to give you that scripture because we need to talk about the spiritual perspective of soul ties. Now, there's a book that I read some years ago called The Other Side of Rejection by Joshua P. Smith. I think this was a great read and he talked about uh, healing the damaged soul. And I think his definition of soul was really good. He said, your soul is shaped by life, experiences, trauma, influences, upbringing, and culture. Your soul is your will, your mind, emotions, desires, perspective, and thoughts. So coming from a sexual perspective, you laid with someone that you're not married to. How, how do you know that this soul tie is real? What are some things that you can see that make you know that you have a soul tie? So one of the reasons is when someone controls you emotionally, right? 
So say you've been you've been dating or, you know, you out kicking it, you know, you're living your life and you had sex with someone. Again, this is from a sexual perspective. Maybe that person didn't call you back the next day. Maybe they didn't call you that night. Maybe they didn't text you over the past couple of days. Now you're feeling some kind of way. You're feeling frustrated. You're feeling depressed. You're feeling irritated. You're, you're questioning yourself, wondering, what did I do wrong? You start to ask yourself all of, the, all of these questions. And when you know that before that you've been a secure person, that's that soul tie because now you lost your identity. Everything is banking on this one person that you've been with because you thought that this person would have been the one for you. That's a soul tie because you're out of character. I mean, have you ever seen someone that haven't heard from someone they were dating or they were in a relationship with and they fell out and for whatever reason and they were depressed and then they get a call from that person or they get a text and then all of a sudden their mood changes and they're like, I'm good. And, you know, maybe we're going to work on some things and make this relationship work or I'm glad he texts me or I'm glad she texts me back. Their mood changes. They went from depressed to happy in, you know, five seconds. That's that soul tie because no one should have that much amount of power over you. I mean, there are some things that people do out of character. I have heard stories of people making fake Instagram profile pictures and trying to follow this person and and all kind of different things to check on them to see how they're doing. What are they liking? All these different things is taking you out of your character when you know usually you should be in the bed at this time, but you're so consumed with what this woman or man is doing outside of you. That's a soul tie. You are not yourself. You are out of character. You can't sleep or you can't eat. You've had a, a, a bad argument with this person or they went again a couple of days without speaking to you. Maybe they ghosted you. Maybe those are soul ties because this person has put their roots deep down in you. So we're talking about soul ties is, is spiritual and the effect that it takes on you visibly, but what's really going on on the inside. So let's look at first Corinthians chapter six, verse 16 through 20. Stay with me. The Bible says, do you first Corinthians six sixteen twenty? 20, do you not know that he who unites himself with a prostitute is one with her and body for it is said the two shall become one flesh i'm sure you've heard of that before but whoever is united to the lord is one with him in spirit verse 18 flee from sexual immorality all other sins a person commits are outside of the body but whoever sins sexually sins against their own body do you not know that your bodies are the temple of the holy spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God, you are not your own. You were brought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. So you're no longer yours. If you're a believer, you are committed to Christ. So having these soul ties, it's a spiritual battle. It talks about the two becoming one. And that's the way God sees the two becoming one in marriage, right? Right. Not girlfriend, boyfriend. I know this is controversial. I know by today's standards, if you're shacking up, you're married. I, I get all that. But marriage is spiritual. Marriage is something that God created. Number two, repent and ask for forgiveness. Do not go back to the person that has the soul tie with you. Don't put yourself back in those situations. Going back and forth with someone that you have created a soul tie with in hopes of getting this person back, that's probably not the best way to go about it because the soul tie is what's going to keep the both of you bound together. And if they're mistreating you and if they're not giving you the love that you desire or they're not making you feel like the most important person in the world and they're uh, using your trust and your love against you, that's not healthy. First John chapter one, verse nine says this. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. So when I talk about repent and ask for forgiveness, you want to take that to God. 
you want to talk to God and let him know, like, forgive me for committing a sin or committing this soul tie with someone that I'm not married to. And it's okay to confess your sins. It says, if we confess our sins, he will purify us from all unrighteousness. So it's okay to repent. Just don't go back to it because God want to do something different in your life. But as long as you continue to go back and forth with this person, and I know it can be hard because again, the souls are tied together. They are a part of your experience. I'm not saying this is easy, but it's something that a process that you have to go through if you want to get rid of the soul tie. Are you a content creator, YouTuber? Maybe you've interviewed someone on your video podcast and they said something that was really, really good. Or maybe you said something that was really, really good. Well, enter Opus Clips. This is the platform that I use when I want to share 30 to 60 second video clips that I can share with the whole world. I mean, you can share those clips on TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, uh, Instagram reels, like these 30 to 60 second clips that Opus Clips can give to you with the click of a mouse. All you have to do is upload the recording and boom, Opus Clips within maybe 10 minutes will give you 15 to 25 different clips with description on the side of the video. And it also gives you like a title and it gives you a rating and let you know how powerful that clip can be used on social media from a rating of 99 all the way down to maybe 60. This is a phenomenal platform that has took my social media marketing to another level. If you want to level up your social media game, go in the description below right now and get the link for Opus Clips. This will not disappoint you. Now, I know, like I said, this is tough because maybe you have been on a couple of dates you've been kind of kicking it with this guy that he's everything that you have imagined i mean he's six three he got the six pack abs he makes a lot of money you know the woman she got the small waist she's all natural uh no bbl she's uh shaped how you like her i mean this woman is bad this guy he's everything you wanted physically but don't let the attraction fool you now don't get me wrong i understand that uh, attraction is important, but there are some people who've never been with an attractive person in their life. And by the time, you know, you get to this person, like you're, you're the best thing that ever happened to them because you are attractive. And I know a lot of guys struggle in this area where they let a woman get away with a lot of unnecessary stuff, disrespectful, all kind of different things because she's attractive. You would rather just suffer. But it's like at the end of the day, I got this fine woman like that is the apex of life is I have a fine woman. There are some women that are with men. They believe this is the best man. This is the man that they've dreamed for physically, but he doesn't treat her right. At night, she's crying. It's frustrating. She can't share her true, honest feelings with him. So the attraction is important. But at the same time, don't let that be the attraction that's going to put uh, this guy or woman on the throne instead of God. Like this person has become your God because this is the most attractive person you've ever been with. And that when that soul time, when you sleeping with them sexually, it just adds gasoline to the fire. Last but not least, I know this isn't popular, but we're going to talk about it. Fast and pray. You want to make sure that you fast and pray because those are the, the spiritual disciplines that's going to take you to the next level. So let's read Matthew chapter 17, verses 20 through 21. So Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief, for surely I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will move and nothing will be impossible for you. However, this kind does not go out except by fasting and prayer, by prayer and fasting. Now, you probably asking me, Sean, what in the world does a mountain got to do with a soul tie? <laughs> because that man or woman that you can't break that soul tie with is the mountain. 
that person, as Jesus would say, is from here to there. You're trying to move this person from here that's in your bed to there. You want them to be out of your life. So sometimes you might have to push the plate away. Sometimes you might need to do a, a, a three day fast where you're just drinking water. Uh, and, and there's plenty of YouTube videos and books on a different kind of fast. Sometimes it's a fruit fast. Sometimes it's the vegetable fast, all kind of different things, kind of fast that people take breaks from social media. You have to know what works best for you and to the degree that you want the soul tie broken. You know, some people, they go a couple of days without eating anything. So it just depends on how bad that you want it. So some things only come from fasting and prayer. You want to break those uh, spiritual chains off of you, that soul tie that's holding you down. Because once you do fast and you pray on a consistent basis, you will see things clearer. Because I do believe when you do have sex out of marriage, it puts on the rose colored glasses. There's things that you allow for people to do to you that you know you would have never allowed before. But because they got their roots down in you, they're able to have access to your 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 bank account. They're able to to drive your car and take your car and do different things. And that's not your character. Friends and family can be telling you, you know better, you can be doing a lot better than this, but the soul tie has got you blinded. Now, last but not least, this is just a bonus tip. I will say, speak with the spiritual leaders in your church. Speak to your pastor, speak to some of the elders, speak to some of the mature Christians, some of the seasoned saints that can help you in this process. Sometimes, oh, a lot of times we need community to help break us free from these soul ties. We need people that's going to hold us accountable when things get rough because it will get rough. So that would be my bonus tip to make sure that you talk to those spiritual leaders in detail because they can walk you through this. This video is just an introduction I want this video to be like breaking soul ties for dummies. You know, I'm not saying you a dummy. I'm just saying it's just one of those things, just an introduction. So one, I do believe that you have to be a believer in Christ Jesus to break the soul tie because the Holy Spirit is going to help you Two, repent and ask for forgiveness. Don't go back to where the soul tie began. And last but not least is to fast and to pray. I hope this video was able to help you. I believe that there's a lot of people that want to know about this thing about soul ties and how you can break it. And this is just an introduction. So make sure you hit the subscribe button, share this with someone who might need this. You never know. Someone's probably struggling with this right now. Hit the subscribe button and share this with a friend. Also, if you are listening to this via podcast, make sure you leave a rating and review. Would love to hear from you by doing so. If you leave a rating and review, it puts you in a drawing for a free Amazon gift card who doesn't like free stuff. This is Sean Heineman. Check out another video. Uh, it's somewhere around here, I think. But go watch some more content.